Hi, my name is Kong Wing Lam. I'm happy to present one of two thousand Chinese Kung Fu from China. I'm study Hong Ga and Yuan style from Hong Kong. I've been teaching this at Bayer since 1965. Right now I have a studio at California. I hope that you will enjoy this day. Thank you. Hungar is directly descended from the famous temple where the legendary Northern Shaolin or Silum system of Gung Fu was codified. The Silum temple in the southern part of China became the repository of the Chinese martial arts after the temple in the northern part of China was destroyed by the Qing government. The lineage of the Hungar style was passed down through many famous martial artists including Ji Sin Sin Si to Luck A Choi, who is credited with spreading the art of Hungar to Canton. Wang Tai studied under Lek A Choi and sent his son, Wang Lam Ying, to study under him. Wang Lam Ying not only mastered all that Lek could teach him, but also sought out Hung He Guan to give him more knowledge. This skill and knowledge was transmitted to his son, Wang Fei Hung. Wang was a very famous man whose life story has been told over and over again in books, movies, and radio programs. His follower, Lam Sai Wing, is very well known for his efforts to spread the art of Hung Gao Gung Fu to the general public. His books on the subject were among the first written and photographs of him teaching students in Hong Kong are shown here. Two of his well-known students were Lam Zhou and Xu Kao, who in turn instructed Master Kuang Wing Lam. In the little tiger claw, the sound of fire like this. When you try to push the air down to the lower diaphragm, if you make a sound, you push the air out and create more energy and turn it back. The single claw, or use the same muscle by making it sound like In the queen face strike, sounds fall away. The most important queen bit sound is like you try to using the energy person to the sort flat area right here. In the middle step, we have sound falling away. The Hungar style of Gung Fu is well known for its strong stances, and the horse stance is one of the most important. It is reached by walking the feet out to a distance that is three and one half movements apart. The back is kept straight, the thighs are parallel to the ground, and the feet are pointing straight ahead. The front stance, or bow and arrow stance, is reached by moving the left foot back so that the toe of the lead foot is in line with the heel of the rear foot. The toes of both feet are pointed at a 45 degree angle. The distribution of the body weight is 70% of the weight over the lead leg and 30% over the rear leg. 
the cat stance or hanging leg stance is formed in such a fashion that the weight is over the back leg. The rear foot is at a 90 degree angle to the line bisecting the lead foot. The cow mouse stance or twisted leg stance occurs in three different levels. The first is very high, the second is with the knee nearly touching the ground, and the third is midway between these two. In the horse stance, the muscles are all taut. This is not a resting stance in the hungar system. When delivering a strike from the bow and arrow stance, there is a slight lean forward that is even more pronounced so that the neck, back, and leg form a straight line when delivering a tiger claw strike. The southern styles of Gung Fu are known for their many intricate hand movements, and there are many different methods of delivering a strike in the system of Hungar. The regular fist that is employed in the Hungar style is formed by closing the fingers very tightly. Yup Ji Choi is the vertical fist with the entire surface of the fist serving as the striking surface. Ping Joy is the flat punch. Gua Choy is the back fist. Chong Choi is an uppercut. Pek Choi is a hammer fist and is delivered in a 45 degree downward angle to the side of the neck. Cup Choi is the downward flat strike with the second knuckles of the hand serving as the striking surface. Chop Joy is the leopard or panther strike. Notice the position of the thumb which gives added strength to the striking point which is the second knuckle region. Feng Gun Choi is the phoenix eye fist which is used to strike nerve centers, the eyes or the solar plexus. Again notice the position of the thumb in the formation of the strike. Chop Jung is the finger jab and the tension is maintained in the fingertips with this technique which will cause a slight bend to appear. Bu Sao is an uppercut finger thrust. Pek Jung is a basic chop. Notice that the thumb is bent inward. Bu Ji is the two finger thrust or sword hand strike. The two fingers are able to deliver power over a very small surface area, thereby increasing the destructive power of the technique.
Poijun is a palm push or palm strike. Wan Toijun is the side hand push. Fu Jiao is the tiger claw strike, but it is important to note that the strike is delivered in a downward angle, not straight ahead. The thumb and the first finger form a half circle. Tension in this technique is over the palmer surface of the fingers. Long Zhao is the dragon claw, and here the tension is over the back of the hand with the fingers extended. The Hawk Joy is the crane's beak, and the first three fingers are the striking surface. The power in this technique comes from the snapping action of the wrist. The Q-Sao is used in this context as a block. Nao-Sao is the crane's big block or hooking hand and the power is in the wrist, not the fingertips. There is a snapping back of the forearm as the pull occurs. The Ji Tai Sao is the crane's head block. Kwat Jung is a cutting move, and the power is focused on the back of the wrist. The Q Sao, or bridge hand, is mainly used as an exercise in the Hungar system to produce the powerful forearms. Remember to practice this movement with dynamic tension, or as it is also known, isotonic movement. The Fen Q translates as open and stretching, and this is exactly what the movement entails. The final technique that is demonstrated is the Chun Q, or sinking bridge. Here the power is focused as a pushing down. The Tiger Crane two-man sparring set is designed to teach the student to respond to a fighting situation without thinking, employing the techniques of the Hungar system in an instinctive manner. In order to perform this set, it is necessary for the student to have mastered the Tiger Crane form, as the techniques that are used in this set are found in the two-man sparring set.
The whole idea of learning the sparring set is not to learn the form, but to learn how to react to your opponent's attacks. The student is first taught a sequence in direct relationship to his partner's movements. The opponent's attacks are directed at specific targets at a specific angle. The student learns to respond to these attacks that are delivered with moderate speed and power. After he has mastered the form, the attacks are delivered with more speed, more power, and finally at different angles. This form thus allows the students to progress to sparring on a controlled level. Traditionally, open sparring was not undertaken by the student of Hangar for the first two to three years of training in order for him to develop his basic skills. This form is learned as either one side or the other by a given student. After he has mastered his side, he is then able to learn the opponent's side of the form. However, the form is never practiced without the partner, as it would defeat the purpose of the set, which is to develop the response to the opponent. Because this form is so impressive when performed at top speed, it is often used for demonstration purposes. Here we see the knee is raised to block the opponent's kick. Here we see multiple arm breaks. The elbow is used for close in fighting techniques. Here you see where a block is delivered to stop the opponent's hammer fist blow. These blows, as previously noted, are delivered at half power. The initial movements are designed to look at your opponent and to look for openings. These movements are hooks. They are not mantis claws. Here we are showing the techniques very slowly to give you an idea where the blows are to be delivered followed by the appropriate response to it. The double hammer fists are delivered to the rib cage of the opponent. Here the elbow is pinned against his body, locking the arm to decrease its usefulness. The kick is directed toward the groin of the opponent. The crescent kick that is delivered here is delivered following the jump to avoid the sweep. This is delivered in case an opponent stands up quickly and will catch him in the upright position. breaks are again shown. Again, you can see the use of circular blocking techniques along with straight power types of blows and direct power on power blocks. Since the punches are delivered to the openings of the opponent, the angles may actually change each time that this particular set is practiced, depending upon the size of the opponent.
shown from the side angle, the angle of the attacks can be better seen. When performed slowly, the initial movements can be seen to be a stalking approach to the opponents looking for the opening. These palm thrusts are delivered toward the chest of the opponent and are redirected with the blocking arm. Here we have a hammer fist strike aimed toward the back of the opponent, which is blocked by a similar hammer fist movement. When this palm strike is blocked, the attacker moves his hand to the outside and attempts to strike again. You will notice that in several points in the form, that contact is maintained with the opponent's arm in an effort to control his next movement. Once again, as in all forms of martial arts, footwork is extremely important and is useful for evading the opponent's strikes or sweeps. As previously discussed, when the student learns this particular form, he learns to respond to his opponent's attack at the particular angle the attack is being delivered. As he improves in his skills, the speed at which the attack is launched is increased, and also the angle can be varied. This allows the student to get as close to the concept of free fighting as possible, while at the same time using the specific techniques of the Hungar system. You also note that the Hungar style is noted for its powerful techniques and that the blocking techniques that are used, like those of all Chinese styles and martial arts, serve to redirect the force as opposed to meeting it with force upon force. Although direct blocks are used, the majority of techniques involves a circular movement in which the opponent strike is redirected, thereby requiring less expenditure of energy than a direct force on force type of power block. This particular form is also especially useful to allow the student to recognize the areas which are open to attack with any particular counter response and thereby allows him to focus his attention upon these areas to protect himself when launching his own attack. The form will be shown through in its entirety one more time in order to allow you to capture the rhythm and fighting spirit that is demonstrated within this form. Now you see this form, of course I don't expect you to learn everything from the form. It takes a lot of hard work and understanding. If you have any special uh, question you don't uh, quite understand, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.